Hey guys, welcome back to Chopper Chris Choppers and Paint. Today we're going to be finishing the fender that we started last time on the channel. We're going to go ahead and block sand that 2K urethane primer, get it ready for paint, put down the base coat, lay down some flames, and the clear. So stay tuned, we'll get it done. We're going to start getting this fender ready for paint. Last time we put it in primer, we used a 2K urethane primer. We put four coats on this to build it up really thick so that we could block it down nice and flat, sand out any imperfections and get it ready for, for paint. Now before I sand this, I'm gonna put a light dust of black spray paint on it. I call it a guide coat. When we start to sand this, the high places will cut off. You won't see the black. Any low spots, the black will remain and it'll, it'll show you as a guide um, to what you need to do. Let's go ahead and get this straight on just a light dust coat. There you go, that's slightly dusted. <clears throat> Doesn't need to be much. It'll make a big difference when you start to sand. You'll see a nice big bright gray spot. And then the, the black will be left in the low spots, the pinholes, any scratches. You'll see it real easily with the black in there. To block sand the fender, we're going to start with 400 grit sandpaper. And we just want to cut that in half. Fold it long ways. Cut it in half like that. And it's perfect for three pieces on the sanding block that we'll, we'll be using. Start with the 400. We'll finish it off with some 600. That way the scratches are super fine. The base coat does not show the scratches. Then you're going to want to put that in your water and let it soak for about five minutes before you use the sandpaper. Now you can see where the low spots are with the black. I've, I've leveled most of this off and right here, a little low spot. There was that little line right there, a little crease I had missed. And then once you've burned through that primer, if you start seeing body filler, you've got to stop. I'll have to spot prime that right before we put a first base coat on. And here we still have guide coat. And you can see where I've sanded the guide coat off. anywhere where it's perfectly gray, no black speckles, you know the, the surface is perfectly level. No pinholes, no scratches. I'll keep going here until it's all perfect. Okay, we've got this all done. I finished it in 600. I went over it in 400 first, got all the scratches, all the low spots out, and then I went over it again with 600. And you can see this will show us any minor little pinholes, that's a pinhole right there. I'll fill that with spot putty. Any, anything else like that. We'll address that right before we spray the first coat of base coat on. Now we're just going to move around to the paint booth. Get ready to spray the silver first. We need to spray it silver underneath the Durango red. And then once uh, that's all dry, I'm going to tape it up for some flames. And I'll show you that. 
This is a little bit of a wax and grease remover, a quick clean from Nason. Any kind of wax and grease remover will do. Just give it a quick once over with this. Any kinds of oils from your skin will make the paint react and do what we call fish eye. It'll leave little pen holes in your paint. You know how oil and water don't mix well paint and oil don't mix even though paint is somewhat of an oil based product but you don't want any kind of oils on the surface of this even oils from your skin will mess you up so make sure it's super super clean cleanliness cleanliness is the most important thing when it comes to painting something just give it a good wipe down with wax and grease remover Our color we'll be using is a, is a base coat called Durango Red. It requires a silver base coat. We need to spray this thing silver before we put the Durango Red because it's probably translucent, uh, similar to a candy paint, just to a little lesser of an effect. But any silver will do for that. So I've got some, some silver here. We're just going to mix a little of this. Probably, uh, you know, if it feels real thick, mix it one to one. Not so bad, mix it two to one. This feels pretty thick. I'm going to mix it one to one. You can pick up these mixing cups. They have the ratios already on them here. For a fender that size, uh, I don't need a whole lot of paint. Remember, you're going to reduce it one to one. So one part paint, one part reducer. It'll be up to the line there. And, uh, I think that'll be enough for us. I'm going to go ahead and mix two parts just to be safe. Let's go to the two with the paint on the one to one ratio. Two there. I'm just going to use this Nason full base reducer. It's pretty universal. It'll work in just about any base coat. Matrix reducer work well the same way. We got a two right here. And that's a one to one ratio. Make sure to stir that well. Once you've been painting for a little while, you, you almost go by feel. What I mean by that is the, the paint needs to be thinned just, just right. If it's too thick, it won't spray well. It won't atomize in the air. And if it's too thin, uh, you know, it just won't work well either. It'll, it'll give you problems like running, the metallic and the, the silver will, will sag. And it's after a while you get used to how it drips off of the paddle here. I look at it and I'm, I'm looking for a quick drip action. That means most of it's run off pretty quick. If it sits there and runs like a syrup, off of the stick, a long string, and it takes it a while to start to drip, you know that that's going to be too thick. It's, it's hard to say. Uh, it's just something you'll get a feel for.
five minutes. Throw a second coat on now. Throw a second coat on. It's been about five minutes. Uh, forgive the foggy uh, lens. I've just got the, the camera in a plastic bag to prevent the overspray from getting on my lens. Uh, bear with me here. We're going to put a second coat. You'll see me kind of dust through that last coat on there. I pull the gun way back and I just fog a coat on there at the very end with silver. That makes the metallic layout really even and consistent. We've let the silver base coat dry about 30 minutes. It's ready for the red. Here's a little bit of Drangle red I had left over from last year. I painted a bike the first time. Luckily, I had a little of this left. We can make the paint job match perfectly. This has been thinned already a little bit. I think I'm going to mix it two to one. Get my two to one ratio. I'm going to put two parts. Go to the two, where it says the one, on the two to one ratio. I went to two, and I went to two. Two to one. Put that in the gun and spray a couple coats of that on. I like to set up the spray pattern on my paint gun with lacquer thinner before I put the paint in there. I don't want to put the paint in and then get a big surprise because my fan is too narrow or the fluid needle is opened up way too far. So uh, with, your, with your wash thinner, go ahead and make sure your spray pattern and your fluid tip is set up the way you want it. We're ready to fill it up with paint. working on something like this, I like to start on the back of the fender. It's an inconspicuous area 
where something goes wrong, you don't see it on the bike. So I like to start on an area like that, make sure that it's spraying well, and then move on to the rest of the fender. We're just going to put a light coat on for the first coat. We'll let that sit about five minutes and I'll put a second coat on. The second coat of Durango Red has been about five minutes. We're going to let that dry now for about 30 to 45 minutes and then we'll be able to tape for flames on top of this rib. I'm going to try to imitate these flames that I did last time. I used uh, sort of a devil's tail only on the inside so it's like the tips it's got the devil's tail so I'll just get a mental feel for what those look like and kind of reproduce that now in about the same spot Okay, we're going to see what we can do about matching the flames here. They might not be exactly alike, but hey, you know, I did the last flames. So I'm going to do these flames. Maybe it'll be my style and look right anyway. Uh, let's see here. Start about here.
trying to tell I've got this one a lot longer already. Let me start over here. Sometimes you have to pull a piece off and, and try it again. If you're not going to make what you want, and don't be afraid to pull it off. For some reason it's feeling skinnier than the other flame, but we keep it going and see what it looks like here. Looking at the negative space, I'm looking at that negative space, trying to imagine the flame gradually tapering that tip down right here. I'll come back and put the devil's tail in. this into a devil's tail. We're just going to lift right here. Flare this out. Kind of like so. And then come back in. to the point. And that's a devil tail. And so back mask that. The flame with the devil's tail on one side. I got all done with this side, and this side didn't quite match. So I'm just fixing it up a little bit. And I have to match that other side a little more. Don't be afraid to pull it up and, and change it, or start all over again if that's what you want to do. And if you paint it, that's it, it's too late. You'll be able to see this a little bit more once it's back masked. It doesn't have to be exactly the same from side to side. Flames tend to look good when they're not perfectly symmetrical. It makes them a little bit more natural. You know, just do the best you can and it'll look fantastic. We're going to start back masking. I like to use three quarter inch. Regular green masking tape, 3M, and a 2-inch. I like the yellow 
the yellow you can see through it a little bit better than the green but for the three quarter inch the green is fine the back mask we're going to cover all of the areas that you're not going to paint. So we're going to fill in the flame so we want to take everything but the inside of the flame. I'll start with the three quarter inch tape. Get it where I can. And then I'll finish up with the two inch tape and cut tape, bend a little bit, it won't do real sharp corners, but okay. use the three quarter for kind of an outline, take the two inch tape, You can use transfer tape for this also. They sell this transfer tape. It's real wide. It works well. I just like to use masking tape. I always have. It's handy for a lot of different things. You know, playing, you can just start kind of right here in the middle. Push that down and you can see the edges of that fine line tape through the two inch yellow tape. very gently we're going to cut. You don't want to cut into the paint. You really don't want to cut this blue fine line tape either. If you split that, it'll stretch open and you'll have a holiday in the paint. Remember to pull off the tape the inside of the flame. It's very easy to get confused. Pull off the wrong side of the tape. Cutting very gently with the corner of this razor blade. You want to use a real sharp a new razor blade. That way you're not having to fight it. You want to let the blade do the work. And just barely let it slice through the yellow two inch tape and not cut through the blue fine line tape. We're going to keep back masking like this until we get the whole area covered that we don't want to make. We've got that all back masked. Now, do you ever get tired of the guy throwing useless junk newspapers in your driveway? Well, good for stuffing after all. Or great masking paper. Especially those waxy advertisement sheets in the back. Work real good, they won't leak through. Just gonna take this off real well so we don't get any Overspray and flame color on our darker red. You can use wrapping paper for this, newspaper, anything. Get creative. Plastic sheeting. Cloth wouldn't work very well. Cloth would bleed through. But you can always find some old newspaper. One on each end, I'm going to put one on each side.
for the flame color, we're just going to spray a little bit of candy brandy wine over that Durango red. It's going to darken it up. It's a little bit translucent, but it's going to be noticeably darker. That's what I did on the on all the parts of the first paint job. There we go. That's completely back masked, so it's ready to spray the flame color. Okay, I've got a little bit of House of Color candy brandy wine loaded up. A little bit of that paint gun. I'm going to put just a little bit over it, just enough to darken those up. tell on the tape beside the flame and you've got a good coverage so otherwise it's hard to see you see the tape color here you know it's a little light and then we just put it all on at once here and just double coat you can darken up the tips if you want and all your approval I think that's going to look great. We're going to let that dry for just a few minutes and then we can pull the tape off see what it looks like. We're going to let that dry just a few minutes and uh, pull the tape off now and see what it looks like. Hopefully it's dark enough. I have a point of no return. It will be fine. Things are in the last time I painted it. I did two coats. That's the fun part. tape off. Remember your paint is fresh and tape is sticky. You can pull the paint right off of this fender. If it's prepped well, it shouldn't. But always be cautious. Don't go crazy and rip the tape off real fast. Slow and steady. Tape can also leave the glue residue behind after you pull it off. You want to be aware of that. You won't be able to see it until you hit it with clear and it'll look horrible and uh, you'll be crying about it. It's at this stage in a paint job where something goes wrong. When you put in all of the hours of the prep work, been as careful as you could with every little thing. So don't get in a hurry at this point. Put in a lot of hours and it could it could all be for nothing if it goes goes south now. You want to be aware of which piece of tape is on top. When you're in taping this stuff, try to pull it off in sort of the order that you put it back on. In other words, try not to pull the bottom pieces out from underneath the top pieces. Razor to help you on this. 
The razor blade will help get up underneath that tape instead of sticking your finger in the fresh paint. careful here we're going to try not to stick our fingers all in the paint because remember we have oils on our skin and we still have to spray clear on this we don't want to use solvents like wax and grease remover if we don't have to at this point because it could wipe off some of the, the finer details so we're just going to try to avoid touching it with our fingers. It looks pretty cool. And a lot like the other fender did. Should match the rest of the set. There it is. All right, it's time for clear. I'm gonna put that much clear on. <laughs> it's uh, you know, I'm gonna put a little bit more than usual because I want to be able to black sand this clear once it's dry and buff it to a show polish. So I'm gonna put on a few extra coats. And load it up. Same thing, I'm going to start on the back of the fender, work my way up. Yeah, I know my clear is pretty nice.
we're going to let that dry for about 10 minutes and then hit it with the rest of the clear. Went ahead and put the second coat on, kind of a double coat the second time. We'll put all of these coats on real heavy. It's a lot of clear. That's probably three, at least three coats worth of clear I put on in two coats. I'll double coat it each time I spray it. I'm pretty good at putting this stuff on heavy. Sometimes if you try to spray clear on too wet, it's gonna run on you. Cause you a lot of extra work, but I'll be able to sand this flat where you don't feel the edge of that flame. Pick up little dust particles there. Stuff like that always gets in the clear if you're painting in your garage, but that's okay. I can sand that and polish it. It'll look absolutely perfect. Hey guys, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Thanks for sticking around. Remember to like and subscribe, share with your friends, and stay tuned for more good videos like this in the future.